sorry about that, babe. Alright guys, welcome back to another Bits and Glory No Death run. This time we're going to be playing Hook on the SNES. Not the most difficult game by any means. I even did a Let's Play of this where I didn't die after the fact. But uh, still worthwhile. Very fun game. Uh, the review will be up shortly as well. And let's get started. So one thing to think about early in the game is before you have your power-ups with the health, you have to be pretty careful early on. With these guys that jump, I like to stop and let them come to me. Now here, I like to build up a fast rate of speed so I can hit the guy that shoots the bees. And I continue running so I can kind of skip through most of this water section. Sprinting is very key in getting a good distance with your jumps. Uh, you sprint by holding down the Y button. There are plenty of opportunities to get uh, health upgrades, or excuse me, just replenishments through this level, so that's always good. The rule of thumb before you start getting a lot more power, definitely be careful and more methodical. Again, wait for this guy to jump. And here we are entering into the first flying section of the game. We're going to fly up top. I think I get hit up here by accident like an idiot, but I can't remember. Might be thinking of a different attempt. But even if you do, there is a cherry right there. Oh, yeah, no. I actually have a really bad Rufio fight. <laughs> so, we end up fighting Rufio almost normally, where uh, you kind of have to bait out, like, a, a swipe. Similar to how you fight Hook later in the game. There you see it, but the best way to do it, guys, if you have a full health bar, Stay on the left side of the screen, hit Rufio when he appears, and then kind of just go on top of him. He will hit you, you hit back, he'll hit you again, you hit back. It's basically brainless. For some reason I moved differently, <laughs> and we had to do it that way, but... Oh well, we still got it done. So now we have the sword power-up, and uh, it makes this level a lot easier when you have it. If you get hit, you do lose it. But good news is, beginning the level here, we have our first hidden item. Not really that hidden, but in order to get up to the leaf, you have to do a sprint. And now we can uh, withstand more damage. Over there, I like to do a dead sprint to get over that porcupine. If you cut it off a little bit short, uh, you will end up getting hit by that porcupine. And you will lose your um, golden sword upgrade. So for the majority of this level, we're going to be... Uh, Going through the trees here, and again, being methodical when we can, whether it be killing enemies or deflecting arrows from the arrow shooting enemies. Uh, if you do get hit through here, as you can see, plenty of opportunities between item drops and, uh, you know, items like the full heal apple that are just there uh, to replenish yourself, so don't worry. Continuing on here. Uh, there, that is a bit of a troll item. If you take the quote-unquote normal path to get that one up that you saw up in the trees, um, you will likely die. Uh, obviously for this run we don't plan on dying, so we're not going to grab any one-ups unless they're like basically in our way. Um, <clears throat> I might just grab a few just to kind of, you know, style on them, but... Uh, we're actually almost at the end of the level. We have to do a bit of a running jump here. You actually can get over without running jumping. Uh, like I said, I beat the game before <laughs> without sprinting. I mentioned that on uh, my Let's Play, I think, and on my stream. And now we're actually at the boss. <clears throat> Pretty easy boss, especially if you have the Golden Sword upgrade. Uh, the name of the game here is sticking where I am on the left side of the screen. So the uh, acorns and the uh, boxing glove mechanisms can't hit you at all. It's pretty great. And this boss just takes three hits and he's dead. And there you can see a perfect example of the Golden Sword uh, upgrade projectile getting it done quick for us. And that's level two. There's a lot of quick levels in this game, which you will see as we progress on through. Now on to level three. Uh, this one does not have a boss. Uh, it could be, yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I was going to get hit there. This uh, part of the beginning can be pretty tricky. Uh, the best way to get through it, honestly, is to kind of get over to the right and take cover from the boulders, but not the end of the world. And the good news is there's actually another golden sword upgrade in this level. You don't get them in every level, but uh, it is available here. So we're just working our way to the top and being methodical when we can. 
to avoid taking damage, but there are a few instances between uh, enemy drops and just in general to replenish your health. So even if you're a little sloppy, it's not the end of the world. <clears throat> These arrow guys are a little annoying. They take two hits, and I notice sometimes they get bounced up top when you hit them. Like, they sort of like ricochet damage jump. It's very odd. There you saw me wait out the uh, the dude on the unicycle-ish sort of thing. The wheel, whatever the fuck he's riding on. The barrel, looks like. There we go. Um, I wait for him because if you grab the golden sword upgrade and you get stuck in the animation, you don't have iframes, which is really annoying. So you could lose it almost instantly. Where, you know, most games, if you get some kind of upgrade like that and you grab it, you're free from damage. Not in Hook. There you saw the apple, in case you wanted to get it. Again, taking our time here with the enemies. Very, uh, liberal there with the health drops. But we actually didn't need any of it. And in order to get through the rest of the stage here, you just fly your way up. And that's it. Like I said, no boss. Not the hardest stage. He's peasy, baby. On to stage four we go. Which is a interesting level revolving around a lot of flying mechanics. And uh, avoiding enemies, basically. Avoiding these tigers that turn you into stone. And the flying enemies. So first things first, we're gonna fly through here lower and then fill back up with Tinkerbell's pixie dust and go grab our final uh, leaf power upgrade of the game. That's as far as you can go, as far as getting maxed out. For this section, I like to fly up a little bit and stay in between those tigers, eventually dropping down to replenish through Tinkerbell once again, flying up, and now we're in a new section. Be careful of some flying enemies here. And now it's time to go into the water. Now the water section can be a little bit annoying. You're best off um, staying close to the top and hitting the exploding barrels. If you get too close to the bottom, the mermaid will push you up. Uh, which could actually be a detriment. Because uh, it sort of like restricts your movement and then you could end up falling, you know, into one of these, uh, I guess, falling parachute barrels, right? That's pretty much the name of the game. Hit the exploding barrels and avoid the other barrels, and then sooner or later you'll be here. And if you did sustain some damage, the game is nice enough to give you a cherry before the boss. Boss is fairly easy. You're going to want to fill up your fly meter, and when the boss comes down, you're going to jump up pretty quickly to get in a first hit. And I like to fly over to the right here, and oftentimes you'll be able to sneak in another hit. And then if you're lucky enough, you can get one more hit, but here I end up getting a little lazy. I take two hits, but it is what it is. And you probably saw the uh, barrel still falling even after the boss was killed. That's something to note. You can get hit by those. So if you have one hit remaining, uh, make sure you avoid those barrels or you hit them out of the air. Otherwise, yes, you can die even after killing the boss. All right, on to, I believe, level five, which is also another short one. I guess this would be like a cave or a cavern with some pretty interesting colors. Uh, the blue sort of leads you into the next level, which uh, at that point will be the longest one in the game. But a uh, pretty straightforward level here. Just take your time and take care of the enemies. Uh, fill up your fly meter, and then we go all the way to the right here. And we fly up. Watch the uh, falling ceiling of, you know, what are they called? Stalactites, stalagmites. Uh, that one's a little tricky, the one that we just passed, because it's sort of um, obscured by the HUD of the game, which is really annoying. That's one thing that you might get hit by, especially if you don't, uh, if you have no knowledge of the game prior. Taking our time through here, if you hold the jump button, you essentially are flying, but underwater, and it's not using any of the fly meter, obviously. Work our way out, and we're just gonna drop down. Don't even bother with that one-up. Take our time here with these enemies. And we're actually almost done with the level. We just have to go through one more section. Avoiding many of the same uh, obstacles and hazards. 
And we have to, well, yeah, we might be able to make it up, but we're going to refill our uh, fly meter anyway, and we have to fly to the top here. And that's that. Told you guys, not too, uh, not too long of a level. Alright, now on to, at this point, like I said, the longest level of the game, I believe this is level 6. I dub it the snow level. It's a relative uh, straightforward level. Pretty much the hardest spots of it are these enemies that throw the gigantic snow boulders at you. It takes a little bit of time to get used to how to maneuver around them. So tough to explain, you can kind of see it, but pretty much you jump up and sort of kind of like float backwards a little bit. Then eventually when you get close enough to hit them, make sure you hit the enemies quickly. Uh, a lot of enemies that throw projectiles, if you hit them, they have a very quick recovery rate where they could then hit you with another projectile, so just be careful of that. I like to go the top route here. Uh, down below, uh, there's actually another leaf power-up, but as I said, you can't get any more health than what we have right now, so I avoid it. But if for some reason you weren't able to get the health power-up, power-ups early in the other levels and you still need one, uh, or maybe you missed both of them, you can always grab that one. And there you see a uh, well-placed apple full power fill-up, uh, in case you do take some damage. Here you're going to see me kind of employing that same strategy, jumping up and going back just a little bit. Until I can get in range here and then I mash away. And we're actually almost over with the level. Like I said, this one's like long for the time. Uh, it's probably like the second or third longest level in the game in general. It's a lot longer when you don't know what you're doing and you're struggling through it clearly, but when you know what you're doing, obviously most levels are pretty quick. Taking our time down here. Uh, obviously these guys, you have to hit them from behind. There's a log jam of enemies here. Uh, if you do end up sustaining a lot of damage, the boss is coming up. Uh, a lot of these enemies do respawn, so you can farm them for cherries. Alright, now we're gonna go over to the boss. Pretty easy strategy here, but very vital to uh, know what you're doing. So we're gonna jump on this middle platform and crouch. We're gonna start swiping. And now he's gonna be staggered with these uh, dynamite balloons, and that w that's what ultimately does him in. We're able to shift from side to side without taking any damage at that point. Uh, and three damage balloons, I believe, and he's done. Might be four, I don't really remember if the uh, the first double swipe hits him twice or just once. But either way, that's like the uh, that's the easy way to do it. If you start messing around, going from side to side and stuff, uh, it's really not worth your time. And now we have another gimmicky level here. I believe this is like level seven, right? Um, I refer to this as the fly gimmick level. I guess you're obviously in a forest. The whole level revolves around auto-scrolling and flying. Uh, there are ledges and there are refills, clearly, uh, for your fly meter. Uh, there are also enemies. Uh, my rule of thumb is stay low. The only enemy that you kind of want to stay possibly towards the top would be the second one. But all the other enemies, I just stay low. Obviously, the, uh, the Tinkerbell refills are somewhat in harm's way, uh, and it's designed like that on purpose, but no worries. It's not that difficult of a level, and there's no boss, too. There you saw the instance of if I kind of flew high, I wouldn't have got hit, but it is what it is. Uh, there's also a Golden Sword upgrade. I believe it's the last one in the game. Again, refilling our meter, uh, flying low, and just taking our time here. There you can see a cherry. At this point though, the level's like almost over. I think there's maybe like two more enemies or something. But obviously if you missed a lot of your power-ups, then yeah, it's a little bit more important, right? There's the golden sword. Thankfully no more enemies in this level, so you can't get a hit while stuck in the animation. And we go hang out with the Lost Boys, and we clear that stage, and it's on to the next. I've actually lost track because I'm stupid, but I believe this is level 8 now? Oof, we get- that's right, I remember that. 
So the gimmick of this level is, uh, unless the flame is near you, you can't see your surroundings. So unless you memorize the game, I mean, you can see a little bit, but you still miss a lot of the finer details. And this is a pretty long, windy level with lots of branching paths and secrets. So I would advise you to go slow and utilize the flame efficiently. And you saw that you can hit the flame so it's not like it's invulnerable, but it does come back pretty quickly. Otherwise, you know, typical strategies, guys, just make sure you take your time, kill the enemies that are in your way, you know, wait for the flame, and be very methodical with your jumping. You can see there's lots of spikes and stuff in this level. There's actually a bunch of really annoying enemies, too. A lot of projectile enemies, which gets a little tough, and some crappy enemy placement, especially at the end. And honestly, this is probably the hardest boss of the game, if I'm being... Objective. <clears throat> well, not this, but this level has the hardest boss. All in all, actually, this is probably... If you combine the level and the boss, this is probably the hardest section of the game. There you see the bone guys. They throw projectiles. And they're very similar to the bone guys in Super Mario uh, 3. And beyond, I guess. Where they keep getting up. And we flew up and got hit by the flame, but luckily for you, and me, there's a full heal here. We're gonna go around it. We're gonna hit the flame, grab it, and try to work our way back up. And the name of the game with a lot of these enemies, especially the projectile throwers, is to be uh, proactive and hit them early. As well as these uh, frogs that are coming up that shoot projectiles at you annoyingly, almost after the fact. And I've been cutting through here, uh, you I think you can go to the bottom. But if you cut through here and go all the way to the right, uh, there's a little bit of a shortcut to cut out some of the level. And we're going to continue on to the right. Rule of thumb if you get lost, follow the signs. I think for the most part the signs don't lead you astray. It's always good. And this is uh, what I'm talking about with annoying enemy placement. You gotta be really careful here, because the hitboxes are a little crappy in this game. And, like, even if their hair goes by and touches your foot, you'll get hit. So, be wary. And there are the annoying uh, frogs that shoot projectiles and float through the air, so be careful of them. Gonna kind of bide our time here and wait with the snakes. And this part I like to be very aggressive, so we're going to go through and hit everything as quickly as we can, because if you play passive there, uh, that's where you can easily get hit by the projectiles from the frogs. And again, here, this is a pretty easy spot to get hit. Uh, I found that actually, if you have any fly meter, you're going to want to fall and then start flying there. Um, because otherwise you're going to get hit by those enemies the way they're placed. So for this boss, we're going to first kind of bait him out to get him to follow us to the right to give us some room on his left side. Now what you want to do is you want to jump over the head and get behind him while his head is off his body. And hit him. And that's the only way you could do it. And the reason why that early uh, spacing was so important is because oftentimes if you just kind of go over it at the beginning, I find that he will not throw his head at you on the left side of the screen. Rather, he will uh, come at you and then you can kind of get stuck in a really crappy pattern where you take a damage or two. And with that fight, I think it's better to be more conservative than anything. And that's that. Now we're on to the final few stages of the game. I used to have a little bit of trouble with this level, but it's honestly not too bad. Another one where it's kind of like, just bide your time, it's pretty straightforward. You know, I'm killing time here, waiting for a good avenue to jump up. You don't want to hit the beehives, the bees are really annoying. They follow you a pretty long way. So the route that I took is the, uh, the path of least opposition. In here you actually don't need to do anything, you just have to run and jump across and keep running. Easy enough. Here you're going to want to keep moving because this dude's going to throw uh, exploding bombs on you. Not very nice. 
Uh, this section can be a little bit annoying. If you want to go to the left, you can get some uh, fly meter, but you don't need it to beat the level. So I just kind of move forward this way. There you saw that the bombs can ricochet. They are super annoying. But once you kind of get in the clear a little bit, you can kind of just jump over, uh, get to the point where you can hit that guy. I was a little sloppy with him. I should have taken my time, but I didn't. Thankfully, I was very lucky and I got the cherry drop. And yet again, another uh, section where we're just kind of running across and that's it. Now for this section, we're going to jump, jump, and then a big jump, hold it, jump down, hit that guy, move back to avoid the projectile, run at full speed, and jump, and now we're at the boss. Another pretty easy boss, so you just have to get behind, uh, fill up your fly meter, and there is a full heal apple at the top. If I remember correctly, this is a pretty sloppy fight for me, but since we do have the full heal, I didn't really care too much. You can see the strat here, it's really not that bad. You don't even need to... Uh, Use your fast flying to get this done. There you go. And uh, you don't need to top off your fly meter or your power there, because the level's over, but <laughs> I did anyway. And the final level of the game here, definitely uh, either this one or the cave level are the toughest. I'd say this one's tougher. It's not as long and it takes a little bit more memorization. Uh, this first segment's pretty easy. Again, just take your time and take care of the enemies. Uh, these stupid uh, arrow shooters, they could be kind of annoying. So what I like to do there is be a little conservative. And then with this person over here, I try to float it's after this guy. Try to float at a level where I could swipe them out of the air if need be. There we go. Oop, I ended up getting hit there. That is really easy to happen, by the way. So even if you do get hit, don't worry, but ideally you want to get through there without getting hit. As soon as you enter this room, make sure you go to the right as quickly as possible. That way you could deal with the first enemy. Um, I'm going in and out to try to farm for uh, an extra health. I used to always get hit here like twice. I got way better at it as I went on. There you see, I was able to successfully farm. And now we're just gonna try to jump up and hit this guy without jumping up on the ledge. Jumping up on the ledge uh, leaves you wide open and getting hit by a follow-up barrel. There's another guy that, you know, I guess if you need to farm, feel free. Because uh, this next segment, a lot of people have trouble with. Um, not necessarily this part, I guess. There's a two parts here that are a little tricky. It's the one after this that's really tricky, but you'll see. So we're going to have to deal with an arrow shooter here. What I like to do is kind of do a smaller jump so I can hit the arrows. And then we're going to deal with one of those projectile boomerang knife guys. So I kind of employ that same strategy where I kind of jump over it, jump down, and then I hit him twice. Now here is the toughest spot of the game if you don't know what you're doing. Fill up your meter, avoid those, start flying fast all the way to the right, up, and I'll tell you when to cut to the left. Diagonally to the left. After you pass this guy, cut through, diagonally to the left, and exit. I wouldn't advise grabbing any of the items there uh, at all, to be honest with you. Now here, we're just going to try to maintain our fly meter. Uh, we're going to sprint fly, and we're going to take out the enemies when we can, uh, being conservative until the, uh, the last spot after this enemy. But that last room, guys, as long as you uh, fill up your meter, and maintain that same flight path that I did, it's pretty easy. It's actually harder to fly through here than it is in that level, or excuse me, that part of the uh, level prior, so don't worry too much. Another uh, screen segment here where they start out with barrel throwers. Just kind of keep moving and avoid them. Take him out first, fill up your fly meter, and now you are home free, baby. It is time to fly up and around, avoid all these enemies together, make sure you sprint fly so you can actually get there. If you were low on health, our buddy here will kill all these enemies for us. And if you're lower on health, I feel like the game drops a lot of cherries for you. I would say the worst I've ever seen was one. I usually see two, and there's been times where I've seen like four or five cherries. Anyway, hook time. Very similar to Rufio. You have to wait for him to strike you before you can hit him. That's all it is. Four times, I think, and then he's done. Yep. 
So you saw me hit him once or twice where he didn't even have his sword, sword drawn. Technically it was drawn in the code, you just didn't really see it. Uh, I was able to time it well enough where he wasn't even able to start his animation, basically. And classic old school games, guys, you think it's over, but it's not. You're gonna have one more final showdown with a two phase of hook. First phase, you're gonna wanna jump over is a kind of grappling hook hook and jump into the wire or the chain. Hit him three times and that successfully activates phase two, which is very similar to the phase that we just fought on the other ship. Or on this ship, just higher up. Now this is a sloppy fight, but pretty much what you want to do is stay close-ish to him. Keep walking, uh, you bait out an attack, and then you can hit him Again, similarly, uh, like we did with Rufio in phase one hook. Again, that was pretty sloppy. Um, but you know what, we got the job done. Now it's up to you to enjoy the ending and possibly do it yourself. So, hopefully you guys got some uh, tips and tricks from this video, from either something I said or at least what I did. Um, if you are having trouble with it, let me know if I did help you at all. If I didn't help you at all, and I maybe inspired you to do a uh, challenge run at some point, all the better. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, stay tuned for some more hook content, and check the pinned comment description below for any other hook content that I've already done. Take care.